Uh, Dennis, uh, you uh, just uh, following Pat Murphy, president of the Board of Education, describing some circumstances in the schools in Berkeley County. This is obviously not the reason why I invited you in more as a city council member, but following what Pat had to say as a retired teacher who spent his career in the classroom, any thoughts? Well, and come um, on, a little closer to your mic, if you mind, sir. <clears throat> yeah, what I've noticed, I have a daughter who is a librarian at uh, Rosemont Elementary School. Um, you don't see the problems discipline-wise, I don't think, in the elementary schools as much as you start to see them in the uh, middle schools and the high schools. Um, but I think they need to get a handle on discipline. Uh, 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 problems in the ca- classroom, I think, is what's persuading teachers to lead the profession. Um, uh, it's not, in my opinion, it's not so much the salary that they're getting paid as it is teachers need to be able to put the finger down or put the thumb on the problems that they have in the classroom. And and that comes also, they need more assistance from the administrators. Mm-hmm. Um, and I heard Pat say that that's some of the problem that they're the administration i think the administrators are are so much younger and less experienced today than what they were in my day mm-hmm. i mean i i was in the classroom my last seven years i was the assistant principal at eagle school intermediate and i had taught at rosemont for four years and at south middle school for 29 years before i even got that position at eagle school so you had a lot of experience at that point. Yeah, in the classroom. You've seen a lot of situations. Well, not as many as some people, but but also in the classroom, you have to be consistent. That, that's what's important. You got to keep, got to be consistent with those kids. As an educator, what are your thoughts on promoting a child to the next grade? Who I think Pat said we had one kid who spent twenty-two days in the classroom all year, non-medical issues. Uh, also, another one who did uh, slightly more than that, we move them ahead anyway. Uh, I disagree with that. I, I, I don't think a kid should just be passed along because I've, I've heard of, of parents of students who were passed along, graduated, didn't have the, the necessary skills to, to carry on with his life, and they come back and put it on the schools. Um, I don't know. Some, some have them. sued schools. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. I don't know if they sued schools, but that that's a possibility. Mm-hmm. And one large oh, yes, amounts yes, of money. Yes, yes. Yeah. Bill, you look like you had a question. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thanks, Dennis, for coming in. Uh, the last few weeks we've had uh, s- some focus on the roundhouse and how best to, to utilize and, uh, and keep the roundhouse. The city has been kind of a uh, – cyclical approach to it sometimes they're supportive sometimes less supportive uh how do you see the roundhouse fitting into the city's plans first of all i will admit that i am not an advocate of the roundhouse i think the roundhouse is a great tourist attraction um and i think it's it's necessary to keep it um, um up to standards uh, like replacing the roof when necessary or if there's uh, unsafe situations to take care of those. Um, but I, I, I sort of don't agree with um, adding these new modern conveniences, um, but it's happening. Um, even though I don't agree with it, it, it's taken away the, in my opinion, the historical uh, background for that uh, for the roundhouse, but yet uh, the roundhouse could be a major tourist attraction uh, for the for the city. And you have to have bathrooms, you have to have convenience for the disabled and the like. Uh, why would you be uh, questioning these type of improvements? The bathroom is a necessity. Okay, I agree with yeah, you there. Okay. I'm, I'm, you have no argument. Sure. With me. Okay. Um, I'm not so sure about the elevator. I mean, the elevator, I think, is just a way of getting folks to the second floor of, um, I'm not sure what they call that building. It's not the 
roundhouse itself. Yes. It's, mm-hmm. it's the building off to the side. Um, I think that they're doing the elevator there so that they can have um, uh, activities up there. And, and to get people up there, especially like the handicapped, to get yeah. up there because they can't go up steps often. Unfortunately, well, not not unfortunately, but the American Disability Act says that if you have a something open for the the public, you have to be able to accommodate the disabled. Yes, yeah. and, and I guess that's yeah. the reasoning yeah. behind yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Now I will say this: I talked to uh, Matt Umstead. Um, I guess a week ago. Yeah, we had him in last oh, week, actually. Okay. Mm-hmm. And um, he told me, excuse me, <clears throat> he told me um, that they have the monies necessary now to complete the, um, the elevator and also to um, get the bathrooms done, if they haven't already. Because they had a prom there, so I'm sure they have the bathrooms. Yeah, the bathrooms are finished, yeah. Um, He also said that they have the money secured for the uh, HVAC system there. Mm -hmm. Um, So the monies are available for those aspects. Um, So, and, And he said something about a good possibility of those being done uh, I think he said by the end of December. By the okay. end of this year, I mm-hmm. guess. I don't have a problem with that. Um, but I don't see the roundhouse or that facility that we're talking about as being able to support itself. So they're going to continuously come to the city and or the county yeah. for additional monies. And I don't think it's our responsibility to um, keep them th- to fund they it. should yeah to fund no, them. Matt, they Matt, should be self supporting yeah. Adams disagrees with you in the sense that he thinks if that rectangular building is completed, they can hold uh, so many more events in there, receptions and whatever that the rent they would charge would more than pay the fee for what's necessary to get it to that level. I hope that that's true I do I, I really hope that that's true. But I don't know if that's but going to work out that way. Let mm-hmm. me push back a little bit, Dennis, and I can appreciate your position. But a but an, uh, a building or structure that is so embedded in our history, as the Roundhouse is, uh, it is a historical structure, and it also has the possibility of being a tourist draw, which the city would benefit from. Why would there not be some obligation on the part of the city to help support? Well, I, I'm not saying that the city would not okay. do that. Yeah. I'm just questioning whether I would go to extremes in that case. How uh, much does the city provide now? Do you have any idea? I do not. And, and nor I do, do I. Know, I don't know. What I, I do know that, that they've come for us for matching funds to get grants, mm-hmm. but I, I have no idea yeah. what that amount would be. Mm-hmm. But a thing that bothers me somewhat also is the amount of monies that they have already put into that facility. And um, I mean, I bet that way before I was on council, um, probably maybe in the 80s, uh, when they had another board down at the roundhouse, um, they got a lot of money that just went into the architectural fees. Well, there may have some. But the, the the bulk of the money, a lot of the money came in the early 2000s uh, that was for structural integrity. And uh, the roof was included. But more than that, they went in and found out what – where the structural weaknesses were, and they use the money to do that. So we have now a building or structure that is safe. And and and, and, and what it, I said earlier yeah. was the upkeep of the building, making it safe yeah. and whatnot. That's important because mm-hmm. it is it is a tourist attraction without mm-hmm. a doubt. Yeah. But is it really? I mean, I'm a relative newcomer to the area. The first time I went to the Roundhouse was for the Home and Garden Show a couple of months ago. Um, it prints. It, when you first look at it as a ruin among ruins you know there's the, whatever the other building is it's falling down next to it and mm-hmm. all that it is not 
it, I think the Roundhouse has a great potential, that whole part of Martinsburg has a great potential to sort of be a, an Old Town Alexandria kind of, kind of look. And frankly, Old Town looked a lot like that when, when I was growing up. Um, but it does, it does take investment. Right now, I, to call the, the Roundhouse a tourist attraction, I think it's, for somebody who's in a larger history tour, it's a, it's a stop along the way. But I think it's in its current condition, which I disagree, I don't think it's safe. I think the walking surfaces in the the I was talking the about the building itself. Right. Yeah, the yeah, building's okay, not yeah, going to yeah, collapse. Yeah, yeah. The structure right. yeah. But in right. terms yeah. of perambulating right. the area, yeah. it's it's far from safe. And I have no idea what something like this would cost. But it just I, I think history shows that as a venue for home and garden shows or gun shows or you know, all the stuff that fills the, the Dulles Expo Center, you know, every every weekend. Um, there, it, there is no equivalent out here. And I think the roundhouse could really serve that purpose. But I think it would also be a yeah. very expensive proposition. John, if I could very quickly, and Dennis knows this as well about than I do, uh, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, they had a lot of rail days at the roundhouse that did feature the history of the roundhouse, the history of the railroad, and that was a venue that was a tourist attraction. People would come in. And that's what and, I'm talking about as right. being a tourist attraction. We've drifted away from that recently, okay. uh, but for uh, four or five years it was a, a attraction at least for a couple a couple right. of weekends during the year. Yes. Yeah. The yeah. longer term yeah. goal now seems to be more of an event center. Yeah. Uh, and Dennis Etherington is our guest, city councilman. Uh, and at this point, you have your doubts as an event center whether it could exist with create enough fees to pay for itself, as opposed to continually needing help from the city of Martinsburg's budget. Well, not just the city, but the county, the county as well. Of course, yes. Um, I just. I don't think it's big enough to be what you might call a convention center. Um, I don't think it would uh, 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 be able to support itself in that small a venue. Mm -hmm. Now, for weddings, that might work. I don't know. Um, I know our kids, when they got married, um, one got married at the... Uh, well, the Holiday Inn was one, and the other Purple Hours. Purple Hours the other yeah. one was at the Purple Hours, and they have a larger area than I think that that right rectangular building to the side does. Yeah, and, and yet I think Martinsburg had their prom, their after prom yeah, was there, yeah, and, their, yeah. and whatever. And uh, Matt Umstead tells me there are weddings there. So yeah, um, but I, I don't want to. I don't want to spend the whole twenty minutes that we or ten minutes we have left on the on the roundhouse uh, still too. I want to touch on a couple of things with you, Dennis, because you've been around a while, and you've been an councilman for several years. Since 2008. Yeah, so that's 13, 15, well, 15 years now. So uh, we've had some changeover at the county level. We've got uh, new leadership there with Eddie Gokenauer and Jim Whitaker. Jim's kind of been around, but he's the new president, and Steve mm -hmm. Catlett's there now and whatever. So uh, are the relations between the city and the county improving? Because there have been a lot of lawsuits that have gone back and forth. Uh at this point in time, I think things are pretty good, to be honest with you. I mean, um, I have a good relationship myself outside of politics with uh, Steve Callett and, um, and Jim Whitaker. Um, I've had a little business with him. Uh, Eddie as well. Um, I really haven't had any contact with um, Tom Barnhart. Jim. Jim, Jim Barnhart. Barnhart. Yeah. Jim Barnhart. Um, and of course, I know H. D. Boyd from City uh, Council from being on the City Council. Yeah, yeah. So, I, 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 as as I'm I, I believe so. Yeah. Me personally, I believe so. Do you know off the top of your head uh, in regards to the status of the lawsuits no, between the city and the county? I do not. It would be interesting to know what the staff. Probably nobody can comment because they're active, or at least one of them is at this time. I think. Once again, I really don't know <laughs> yeah. okay uh let me ask you about some city projects that are going right right now too we'll talk about the frog hollow trail and some of the other trails and, and such for the city uh your thoughts on those and i think the frog hollow trail is close to completion for most of the city's I, I, responsibility right i believe so yes um i, I personally i think it's a good deal mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me sure um, I like the idea of having that walking trail 
One concern I do have is are we creating an area for um, tent cities to go up? You know, has that been an issue? No, not no. I, I'm just hypothetical, if that's the right word. Mm-hmm. Um, I hope it doesn't happen, and and I really think that um, our police department would take care of that. I mean, they got bike patrol; they could ride bikes up and down there and take care of it. But but that is a possibility. Speaking of your police department, you're going to undergo a change there as well with the retirement of George Swartwood. And I will miss George. I like George. Um, he's very personable. Um, anytime I've seen him in action, he's carried himself very well. Um, he's good with the public. How is the search for his replacement going? I, I don't have an answer for you. I, I, at this point in time, I don't know. Uh, I do know they have some applicants, um, but I don't even know if they're internal or external. When do you get more active into that? I think his last day is June 9, if I remember. Um, as far as... But that's Alan Davis's. I'm sorry. George's last George, day is... June 9. Is it his too? I, I believe so. Okay. I, I'm almost... It's either the 2nd or the 9th. I'm, I'm not real sure. Okay. Yeah, okay. Alan's is the end of June, I think. Alan's George, end of June? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, we are not, as a council, doing the interview... Um, there's a committee made up of uh, Mark Baldwin and I believe Andy Blake and um, the HR person, Steve, can't remember his last name. <laughs> you, you ultimately vote at the end, though, do you not? Well, we'll have to approve it, I believe, but mm-hmm. they're basically doing the interview process and collecting the applications and whatnot. When is your term up, Dennis? Um, next year, uh, a year from this June 30th, I you, guess. You running again? That's up in the air, um, to be honest with you. I enjoy doing it, okay? Um, but when I took the job, when I got on in 2008, um, I was I picked, I was chosen to fulfill a term from, uh, I forget her name, but she had taken another job, and they said there was a conflict of interest. So the council asked for um, letters of interest. And um, Mark Baldwin lives up the street from us. And sometimes we gather in the evening in our driveway. And um, so I asked Mark, what do, you need to, what do you need to know or do to be on city council? And he said, basically, you just have to have common sense. <laughs> so I looked at my wife. And I said, Susan, do I have common sense? And she said, you married me, didn't you? (laughs) (laughs) That's a wife answer. Perfect answer, yeah. So I wrote a letter of interest, and they chose me. And from there, it's... 15 seconds. What will make you determine whether you're on or not? How things go uh, with the council over the next several months, nine months, ten months. No. Whenever... They start taking the the the, um, the 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 area the, the time. Well, hang on, we're going to be back with the final minute right after this. City Councilman Dennis Etherington.